Hi everyone, it's Jen, and I'm here with another weekly update for the Otome Jam. So today is marks the end of week five. I have three more weeks to go, and I'm happy to report that last week I finished a major hurdle, um, probably the most ambitious part of my vision for this um, demo is what I have kind of dubbed the boss encounter. I don't know if you could call it a boss um, by any normal metric is there's not really like combat per se, but I'm going to show you. Um, there's a couple different kind of um, merging together of elements during this whole part um, that I'll go over um, at the end. Um, we'll kind of go through the code and I'll talk a little bit about um, the way I programmed certain things to get them to behave certain ways uh, because there's different ways that you can kind of incorporate movie files with RunPy and um, lay, kind of layer your assets um, but the, it can be a little quirky so uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you some of the elements that I put together here This movie file is programmed to be non-clickable, so I can't, I can't bypass that cutscene. Can't bypass this either. This um, still incorporates the same game element um, as as a normal standard room, where you can investigate and you can interact. Um, with hotspots on the screen. In this case, the hotspots are very, the hitboxes are huge. Um, it's basically just these two. This side of the screen or this side of the screen. And you can see kind of enraging them. Doing your normal interactions takes energy, um, but enraging them will consume an additional energy at this point in the game. Um, I've gone through it myself, and oof, I might have to. <laughs> um, I have to go back and come up with something a little bit more. Um, for the energy consumption, uh, find a way to balance it because it's pretty tight. I don't want to make this game too hard. Because even a perfect run through on this is going to um, consume a good chunk of energy just from having to interact. Um, with the plant creature a certain number of times in order to complete the objective. Or I guess placate it. <laughs> it's really fortunate enough to find the music track that I felt like really suited this scene perfectly. Um, I'll leave a link to where I found this royalty-free music. I am planning on making this a free game, um, so they have two different licenses on, on this website where um, you can use the music for free if you credit them properly, um, and then if you want to use it for a commercial project, then you can purchase a license that's like pretty inexpensive. And I do want to get through this so I can show you the, um, the remaining transitions kind of after this interaction is done. 
I'm going to swap out from a sprite to a movie sprite. Kind of like in the beginning when the, um, the plant first entered the scene. Um, it was queued up as a movie. And then this part is um, programmed like traditional animated sprites where I have the keyframes programmed. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons of um, both methods. So this part is unskippable. And this part is also unskippable. Now we can see where I actually am using this asset that I created last time, last week. This is an Otome game, so finally our protagonist uh, meets the the love interest. <laughs> I plan on having more options in the final version of the demo. But right now, for the Otome Jam, I'm only having this uh, female choice for the protagonist and male choice for the love interest or companion. Um, in the kind of after the jam, the first thing I'm going to do is um, implement the male main character choice and then also implement um, the female companion choice. have the leader switch mechanic is finally entered the game um, which I showed in my first week was the first problem that I tackled uh, and tried to solve and now we finally get to the point in the game where it is implemented okay let's go to the coding part so I can talk a little bit about how I created these transitions I've done some research online um, just on the forums and in the general like Renpai cookbooks where there is the question of how do I make my movie scene unskippable? And there's like a whole bunch of different solutions that involve like disabling, like left click or right click and all this other stuff. Well, hard pause is the easiest solution, but you have to create, you have to program the engine to use the movie in a certain way. So. Renpy does have an option to just play um, play a cutscene um, where it kind of gets rid of all the other layers and it just shows the movie full screen. Um, but the problem with using this command is that it will play the movie, the full length of your movie clip, and then it will use the pause. So to get around this and to get the hard pause to work, let's see where did I put it in here. What I basically did was um, create a movie sprite for my movie scenes. Now my movie scenes are like um, full screen, the 1920 by 1080, but I declared them as a movie sprite and then when I went to queue them up in the game, I know the timing of these videos. Um, that first part where the vines were kind of coming up and it was darkening. I know that's a 10 second clip, so I was able to um, hard pause it. So advantages of using the movie sprite instead of using the cutscene command is that you can program other things to happen while your movie sprite, while your movie is playing. So if I wanted to have like music playing or sound effects playing, instead of like making that part of the video, I could just um, have it here, um, you know, on a, on a sound channel. Um, you do have to tell it to hide afterwards or it will loop. 
because that's kind of like the default for movie sprites is they will automatically loop. And the other thing is, is you do have to make sure you're hiding your other layers. Um, you can kind of see if we go back, actually, <laughs> I don't know if it'll, how far it'll let me use this back button when it comes to using these uh, movie files. Hopefully it'll let me. Yeah, uh, it won't let me, wait, it will, okay. So here, when these um, animated sprites, so I do have like kind of the usual like um, keyframe animated sprites for like this part where they're changing expression. Um, you can kind of see that here with the black and white sprite here, there. Um, they're just animated PNGs like the rest of the character sprites. When we switch over to um, this portion where I don't want the player to be able to skip. So here you can see right after this line, uh, thank you for the favor bestowed. We go to the code. Um, uh, you can see here now that I have the WebM sprite and I know it's a five second long clip so I've hard paused it and then again hidden it afterwards. Now I didn't tell the this portrait here to hide and I didn't tell the music to stop so the music continues and this sprite or this layer of screens stays until I tell it here where it's like so bright this transition This is the start of my kind of cutscene introduction for the companion. Whoops! <laughs> Where did you come from? I want to try to go into scenes. So I jump to this scene after um, that boss is defeated. And I've created this call statement where I hide all the portraits. Or all the... Uh, or the um, I call it portraits, but really, this whole thing... Let's go back. This whole thing <laughs> is actually several layers of screens and um, sprites, but the sprite is not like a normal sprite because I have it on a custom layer because I wanted all these elements to appear in a, in a certain layering so that, um, you know, that this sprite would always be on top of this background um, regardless of when the image is loaded because both things can change um, with like this hovering and also during like the leader mechanic um, switch this background color changes and this um, bar is also updating so this is also on a, pr a program to be on a certain level so that when any of these elements refresh um, they don't the order of the layering doesn't change now there's been s I ran into some quirks with using these um, custom layers that I made. Uh -huh. So let's go to where I've created this call statement to hide all the portraits. So that's in my screen scripts with hide portraits. So normally with a regular sprite, you could just say to hide the sprite, but since I put this sprite on a custom layer, I have to make sure to say hide on layer mid layer, um, which is the custom layer I made or else Renpai doesn't know where the sprite is and it won't execute this hide function. The same with these screens that I made that are on custom screens. Like the leader button I created is on the default screens layer. So I can just say hide screen lead button and it knows where. But since I um, created I guess I did that with these status boxes too. These status boxes that it's telling to hide is this. So when you click on this, this status box here appears on the default screen layer. So I didn't have to tell RenPy where, um, but these, these other elements, this bar and this background, 
that's behind the sprite. Um, those are all. I'm gonna go ahead and quit this. Those are all um, on custom layers, so I have to tell it where the screen is, or else it doesn't know. It it can't execute the command. And in order to do that as a screen, I couldn't just use the on layer um, language here. Uh, the screen language doesn't understand that. So I had to do this um, rendpy command in order to tell it what layer it's on. There might be another way to do this, but this was the only solution that I found worked for me. And um, it's kind of clunky, so I made it this call statement so that um, I wouldn't have to type out this whole block of all this blah stuff every time I want to hide that. Um, so I like doing these cutscenes as a sprite um, because it gives you a lot more freedom to choose what you want showing, what you don't want showing, how you want it to pause, um, and I think it's much easier, at least for me, to figure out than to have um, a hard pause put in there. I mean, to, uh, to, the, to disable, you know, clicking and re-enable clicking and stuff like that. I think it's easier to have it as a hard pause. So that's my solution for the how do I get the, how do I stop the player from being able to click through a cutscene? That's my solution for that. Other things that I got finished is I started implementing story moments um, in the game. So we have a new sprite, this um, child sprite. And I'm pretty happy with how the animation turned out for it. My son says it looks a little creepy, and that's what I was going for. <laughs> Not scary, just maybe just a little creepy if you stare at it for too long. <laughs> uh, so that's the active animation for that sprite. And then I have an idle animation for it too. I kind of wanted to make it look like it was grinding his teeth a little. <laughs> that is what my week was, um, my week consisted of, was uh, creating that whole boss encounter, getting all of my transitions to work in the way that I wanted them to, and um, kind of queue up each scene that I had created. Um, in a relatively seamless way and I was happy with how it turned out because this is the first time that I've tried to do something like this and um, it's definitely way more ambitious than the, the summoning rituals in the first soul union um, but it's definitely closer to my vision um, than what I created in the first game so in the first game when Ilian uh, the protagonist summons his vassal for the first time. There's kind of like a little monster, um, or yeah, well, that's the best way I can describe it. There's a, a monster encounter before you um, can reach your vassal. And so this version of, uh, I guess, creating the same situation I feel like has developed to a point more in line with my original vision where in the first game I had to kind of describe a lot of what I wanted the player to um, experience but the actual like sprite <laughs> showing I think didn't really evoke you know the um, the scene that I was trying to create I was I had to rely heavily on words to try to convey um, the type of scene that I want the player to experience and um, the actual game visuals and sound kind of just all detracted <laughs> from um, from what I was trying to convey uh, you almost had to just kind of read the text and imagine it for yourself 
and try to ignore what was happening on the screen. So this time, I think I was m much more successful in being able to show the player through visuals and sound what I wanted them to experience and um, not rely so heavily on the dialogue. Good luck on whatever um, journey that you might be on. Don't forget to enjoy the, enjoy the process and take care. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.